In the past NRIs, the non-residential Indians of voting rights had been an issue for the Indian government. But now the government has told the Supreme Court that it will extend proxy voting rights to overseas Indians by amending electoral laws. Vion's Jessica Taneja reports. Take a look. Mohanlal Karmchan Gandhi. Ye bhi pravasi bharatiya the. The Indian Prime Minister's promise to non-resident Indians is getting fulfilled. A new block of 25 million non-resident Indian voters is set to be added to the electoral rolls. The government has told the Supreme Court that it proposes to give proxy voting rights to NRIs. Now today they have come to the Supreme Court and have told the Supreme Court that they have taken a decision to amend the Representation of People's Act and the amendment bill will be placed before the, uh, par uh, the winter session of the parliament which is going to happen very soon. So after the amendment is passed and a new law is enacted, then that will pave way for the NRIs who are residing abroad for the purpose of their employment to vote fr from their places of, places of their employment or residence wherever they are abroad. The government had accepted the Election Commission's proposal to give voting rights to NRIs in 2014. Now, a bill will be introduced in the winter session of Parliament to amend the Representation of People's Act. Section 20A was added to include overseas citizens of India uh, who fulfilled certain conditions and who were away for certain reasons, employment or whatever reasons, but, but for that they would have been re uh, resident in that. So from that place they were allowed to uh, participate and uh, be a part of the uh, election process. Until now, high costs of travel and time enabled only a minuscule population of non-resident Indians to cast their vote in India. However, e-voting can change the scenario and allow them to vote without having to fly down to India during elections. Electronic voting was also mentioned in the report of the Election Commission. This was also considered by the central government. But central government for the moment have said that they will adopt proxy voting. But they have uh, formed a subcommittee of the minister to see the viability of electronic postal ballot also. 114 countries, including 20 Asian nations, have adopted such e-voting methods. While citizens in the United States can even vote from outer space, India is still bringing in reforms to adopt new technologies in different ways to ensure NRIs are given equal voting rights. Uh, like all processes, reform has to be a process that, uh, that has to go through. If Centre's proposal comes to fruition, NRIs will become the biggest block of external interest group in Indian politics. Well, I'm, uh, there are so many political parties there. I have a chance to vote for somebody I like and support the party. I, if I did live there, yes, uh, I will um, yeah, like to vote so that I can shape the, the, uh, the Indian um, constituency. But... States such as Kerala, Punjab, Telangana and Polbound Gujarat, which have large population of NRIs, stand to benefit the most. Jessica Taneja, we on. And for more on this story, we are joined by Mr. Nagender Chindan, who is a petitioner and the chairman of Pravasi Bharat and based in London. Thank you very much for joining us on the broadcast. So, how do you welcome this promise coming from the Indian government? This is in fact a very good news and it probably would be the one more historical step in Indian democracy. Uh, it enables 25 million, roughly the est official estimation is about 10 million. So. Altogether, 18,000 votes per MP constituency. So, uh, for example, we have 543 MP constituencies. So, if you consolidate these votes to each constituency, about 20,000. There are MP constituencies in India, whereas MP won by uh, 5,000, 6,000 uh, majority. So, on those constituencies, this would make a significant impact. At least 50 MP constituencies across India will have full influence of NRI voting and this could change the dynamics of politics uh, for good. And the impact will be definitely good because it's not that every NRI is education, it's not that's okay. It's, it's a case where NRI moves abroad, learns lots of good things, lots of good policies in the country they move into. For example, the education system in UK, where I was very, very much impressed. That's how the campaign was started. The universal health care policy in UK, 
where everyone get a equal opportunity and a similar set of health health system uh, so i personally very happy uh, i'm very looking forward for a discussion uh, which is going to happen in parliament this winter session and Mr. Chindon, uh, there are, as you said, uh, uh, the, the figures is a little bit oscillating, but between, let's say, 16 million to 20 million NRIs are currently living abroad, citizens of India at the end of the day, who could actually vote. But this means that actually a certain government could win its election because of people not living in the country voting for or against it. This is a bit of a controversy, isn't it? Uh, it's it's basically voting right is a fundamental right whether you live in a country whether you live abroad in any democracy it takes any working democracy in the world uh, starting from uh, oldest democracy the United Kingdom and all the European countries uh, Scandinavian countries which are proper democracies as as we are they allow their citizens abroad to vote so you get citizens living abroad can vote through postal ballot, through proxy, and uh, countries like United States allowed citizens to vote from space. So, so it's not it's not something new which we are going to introduce, uh, which is already existing in most of the democracy. And in the recent times, Pakistan even tried to set up a software which can enable their uh, abroad citizens to vote. But that's a different story. Uh, ours, we are made a significant steps in this step, in, in this subject. Um, from 2012, when we started this campaign, everyone was asking the similar question which you asked me now. And we try to explain why it is required and what's happening in other democracy, how it's getting influenced, and how it's making a positive impact. So we spread the campaign through websites, Facebooks, and we did the demonstrations in London. That's how we we gained the public support, and then then we approached Honorable Supreme Supreme Court, which actually fundamental made fundamentally made the difference in entire campaign. Supreme Court first time it's accepted our case in 2013 January. We filed in 2012 December. So after Supreme Court holidays in December, they accepted our case, and uh, they issued a notice to Election Commission. Um, there was a there was a story behind this. There were plenty of peti petitions on the same sub subject before we right. filed from yeah. yeah. Oh, please please go on. But yeah yeah, ours is the first case because you know the important points we raised is one is like fundamental rights should be available to any any of the citizen wherever he located, uh, he or she located. Second thing is Mahatma Gandhi, Dr. Bhimra Ambedkar. Swami Vivekananda, these are the founding fathers of India where at certain point of time they were NRIs. Like uh, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar was studying MS uh, at London School of Economics. So if the elections happened at that point of time, they would have potentially lose the opportunity to vote. So these are the important points we gathered in, a, in our petition. Um, and we gathered what we have done so far before approaching the Supreme Court uh, we just not directly knock the doors of Supreme Court. So all with all those right. evidences, and and that's where uh, Honorable Court accepted. And uh, it's been five years now. So it's about five years. The case is now getting a very concrete results. Let's also not forget that <coughs> this could actually help many of the Indian workers. Uh, I'm thinking about West Asia, who definitely cannot afford, economically speaking, a journey back to India only to vote. So this will actually be, as you say, enhancing the Indian democracy. But one question more I have for you is the timing of this announcement is, I would say, at least curious. Gujarat is voting very soon in the first 10 days of December and many of Gujaratis, many Gujaratis are actually abroad. So do you see also a little bit of strategy when it comes to this announcement? think there is any strategy because it's going on from past five years and um, uh, there is no strategy at all they're acting as per the Supreme Court directions and also Supreme Supreme Court's it's it's basically honorable court when when government is I think the government is having some delays because they are trying to figure out modalities of it 
I kind of understand personally because it's not a simple thing. We ours is a vibrant democracy across the world. Uh, not only across the world. If you look at entire Asia, uh, ours is the only democracy uh, which works working. Right. Great. So when you introduce these kind of things, which might impact the population of one billion, which might impact entire democracy. So there there should be a caution on this. However, there is. I don't think there is any strategy, especially. I don't think even if the modalities are completed, that it cannot be completed by first week of December right. uh, in the view of Gujarat polls. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, this was Mr. Nagender Chindan, a petitioner and chairman of Pravasi Bharat, joining us from London.